והנה בפסח כסיב ופוסח הוויה על הפסח. בפסח it is written that Hashem is going to leap over the doors, jump over the doors. This is a second class that we stretched out of a very short maimed. The whole maimed is 75 lines. We managed to make it into two classes. Now the reason we made it into two classes was because I decided to explore Memale Kalaman and Sevev Kalaman in great detail. We could have done it quicker, we could have done it all at once, but I decided that it's a good idea to explore this, this sugya of Memale Kalaman and Sevev Kalaman. And what we know about the difference between Memale Kalaman and Sevev Kalaman is that Memale Kalaman operates in a way of Achones, Askos, and Islapshas. That means the light of Memale Kalaman takes time to get involved in a situation and in a circumstance. And it makes a very, very specific, special adaptation to each environment according to its capacity to receive light and life. And Seva of Kalaman is Memela. Seva of Kalaman does not have any his hachona, doesn't have his askos, doesn't have his lapshas. Seva of Kalaman just asserts itself. The way Seva of Kalaman operates in the body is as if the body is one unit and the body just reacts to the will of Seva of Kalaman. And as we discussed in the previous Shia, this is a concept of reflex. That the moment the Neshama tells the Guf to move, it moves instantaneously with no passage of time. Because the will, whereas, in as much as it's not in a specific limb of the body, is all over the body. And as such, uh, it governs the body with will, with, with force, as opposed to with association and involvement, hachones, askas, islapshas, and so on. And then in addition, of course, we have the other idea of Seva Kalaman, which is will. It's a force. A force that takes over. That it, When you have a, a system which is operating in a limited and in a deliberate way, will is stronger than that. Like, for example, if you're busy doing a particular limud, learning, your will can redirect you to learn something else. Your will can direct you to desire to learn something different. And will doesn't do this by negotiating with you, by giving you time to process what it wants, but by asserting itself. Will is infinite. It's a muscle for save of Kalama. It's stronger than the person. And it overrides the normal processes of achones, askas, and islapshas that happen within the framework of the more sophisticated aspects of what a human being is. So we spent all this time talking about Mamala Kalaman and Seva Kalaman, and basically Mamala Kalaman is more pneumistic, Seva Kalaman is much stronger. Will is just overwhelming, it's stronger. Now we're going to get back to the difference between Pesach and Purim, or Pesach and Shvuas versus Purim and Hanukkah, at least according to the Me'idi. Uh, what I want to do is I want to tell you the answer first and then learn the Maim. It'll just save us possible confusion. And the answer in one sentence is that the Yomam Tev that Amidei Raise have to do with Nisim that came from Seva Kalaman. And the Yomam Tev that Amidei Rabbonman have to do with Nisim that came from Amal Kalaman, period. And uh, based on the basic principle that separates Seva Kalaman and Amal that we discussed, that Seva Kalaman overrides, Seva Kalaman is stronger than the system, and in this case it's the world and Teva. In one point, in one instant, in one moment, Seva of Kalaman changes the situation, as opposed to Mamala Kalaman, that since Mamala Kalaman doesn't happen with that kind of a force, but instead Mamala Kalaman happens with Derech HaChona, Saskas, Ve'eslapshos, this is why in the Yom Amtev and the Rabbonan, namely Purim and Hanukkah, one day we celebrated the victory and the miracle, and the subsequent day we made the Yom Tev, because Mamala Kalaman does not operate in the same kind of way as Sevav Kalaman does. So again, in, in short, the Moya de Midei Raise, the holidays that are Minatayra come from Sevav Kalaman, and therefore opposites can happen simultaneously in one point. The Moya de Midei Rabbonon, the Yom Tev de Midei Rabbonon, Hanukkah and Purim happen from Mamala Kalaman, therefore they happen in two steps. And that's what we're now going to learn. Vihine. The Pesach Ksiv, when it comes to Pesach, it says, Upasach Havayel Pesach. Hashem jumps over the door. Now, of course, we all understand the, the meaning of this, the significance of this. There's so much talk in Chesidus about the meaning of this leap, this jumping over. Um, the idea, of course, is 
that even though the Jewish people and the Egyptians are all mixed together, they're all living side by side, Hashem discerns, He separates the Yehudi from the Mitzri, and the Mitzri dies and the Yehudi, does, the Israeli does not die. But the Rebbe explains that a Pasach also means that the force, the energy source, or the light source and the life source from which the psiche, the jumping over and the makas becheres occur, is itself called the jump. It comes from Sevev Kalam. Pirush, in other words, Shahoya Hanes, the miracle of makas becheres occurred, Ade his galus hahora bebechinas diluk, by revealing a light which jumps over higher than Sevev Kalam. You know that in the Labavach HaGodes, this is just an interesting observation, the Labavach HaGodes that were made for children have a deer jumping over a mountain on the cover. And even when the Rebbe said in the Memvob, Mem Zayin, that they should design Haggadah for children with pictures, and they commissioned the Rebbe Zalman Kleiman Olav Shalom to make a really beautiful Haggadah, the Chabad Haggadah that he put together is extraordinary. That picture with the deer jumping over the mountain was replicated, and it's someplace in that book, if it's not on the cover. And the reason, of course, you have the deer jumping over the mountain is because it's based on a posse. And it says in Midrash, which means the, the voice of my friend, which goes on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is medalag al is jumping over the mountain, is leaping over the hills. And the concept is, so the Medrash says, that what is the meaning of this medalag al that the Eivishter jumped over the clock, Yidin was supposed to be in Mitzrayim for 400 years, like it says in the Chumash, and Hashem shortened it to 210 years or to whatever it is, 136 years or to 86 years, depending on how you count the years of the Golos Mitzrayim and the Shibut Mitzrayim, to hasten our redemption, to hasten our Geula. So the Rebbe, our Rebbe, who, I can't say this for sure, but I'm almost certain, was the one who designed how the Haggad Shal Pesach that Chabad gave out for children should look, wanted to have this image of a deer jumping over a mountain because it symbolizes the entire story of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim in many ways. It, it symbolized the deer of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim as I just mentioned because the Ebi hastened the Yula by jumping over time, so to speak. And of course here also by Makas Bacheres, the Ebi jumps over. And the translation of jumping over is that he introduced to the scheme of Mitzrayim, Eirin Seifa, Seif of Kalalmin, Shaleya, Yidei Hishtal Shalos, Mi Madrege, La Madrege, it doesn't go through the steps, the chain reaction of steps, from step to step, but rather comes directly from Ein Seif, Ha'in Yibachin, Seif of Kalalmin, which is higher than Hishtal Shalos, higher than Mamala Kalalmin, and the implication is, I'm not going to say this with certitude, but I believe, the implication is that there were nine Makas before that, and before the nine Makas, there were several Isis and Moivsim. They came from Mamala Kalalmin. It's only Makas Pachedes. It's only Makas Pachedes, which is so special, so distinctive, so unusual, that it comes from Seva of Kalam, the Debish to jumps over. Kamesha Kosov, the proof is, as the Pasuk says, the Yavar T, I will go through the land of Mitzrayim. So it says in the Haggadah, Anivale Malach Vachulu, Hashem says, I'll do it myself, and no Malach. And of course, the implication is this is unique to Makas Pachedes, and it did not happen by the earlier Makas. So I want to say something about Makas Bechedes. I want to say something about Makas Bechedes, which of course is brought in Tzichas and is brought in Chesidas. Number one, it doesn't take much for Hashem to get Jews out of Egypt. If Hashem wanted to get out of Mitzrayim, all he had to do was have... <laughs> he could have done anything he wanted, but if he wants to get out of Mitzrayim, he'll take Yidin out of Mitzrayim and nobody could stop him, Period. Why do you have to have Isis or Mavesim and warnings and three weeks of warnings and ten plagues, one plague is enough and so on. So the Rebbe explains in the very, very importantly and quite comprehensively that the ten Makis were much more, much, much more than taking the Jewish people out of Egypt. The ten Makis were about an education. If the whole question was taking the Jewish people out of Egypt, that could have taken a second. It took 10 makas and it took 10 months or a year because there was education going on. First of all, the education of the Mitzrayim themselves. Hashem was teaching the world, teaching Goyim about Havaya, that there's an Eibishter who's the creator of the world and the master of the world and he's not limited to nature. He's above nature and he manages nature and he can destroy nature and he can dominate nature. So they should see the Havaya that Pare Harosha, Pare Melchotzaim initially said, I don't know Havaya, as you all know from the Madrashim. 
that if Moshe had said Koy Amar Alekim or Alekenu, Pare would have recognized that force and may have been more attentive to Moshe's request. Shalach Asami Viyavduni. But because he said, Havaya Yud Kevav Kemei, a party says, Lay died, I never heard such a God. A God which is above nature, I don't know. So there was an education from its time. But the Rebbe says, and the Sikhs, there was also an education for the Jewish people themselves. And the Rebbe goes into a whole reason why you have to say that the education of the ten plagues was not only for the Egyptians, it had to be for the Jewish people as well. But I want to say one little thing about the education of the Abish and the Jewish people, which we all know. And we all talk about it in our Pesach Seder, and it's worthwhile repeating. And that is, as the old cliche, it's a simple cliche, it's very easy to take the Jew out of Egypt. It's quite another task to take Egypt out of the Jew. To take Yidin out of the geographical space of their exile was not the, the, the difficulty. Giving them freedom was very difficult. And the Makis were educational, not just for Mitzrayim, but also for Yisrael, because in the ten Makis, the Jewish people were learning about Hashem in a way which taught them freedom. Ultimately, we say, like it says in Hasidus, that Nigla Leya Melech Malcha Amlocha Makadosh Poruchu Bechavedi Oviyatzmi Ogaolam, Hashem revealed himself. And in revealing himself, he redeemed the Jewish people. And Hasidus explains. When Hashem revealed Himself and He redeemed the Jewish people, this doesn't mean Hashem revealed Himself so the gates of Egypt were broken down and the Jews didn't could depart. They didn't need that. Makas Bechedes frightened the Egyptians. They were begging the Jewish people to leave. The Nigla Leim, Hashem revealed Himself and He gave Yidim freedom. When you take a person who's a fifth or a sixth generation slave and knows only uh, only knows the hand that feeds him and keeps him enslaved, and he has to own himself and take responsibility for himself and be a person unto himself, the Ebesh had to give us freedom. And the Makes in general, served such a purpose. There was a process of education. So the Rebbe says in one of his sikhs that Makas Bechedes is different than all of this. Because Makas Bechedes involved not just educating the Egyptians and educating the Jewish people, it actually involved killing the Egyptians. And you can't kill and educate the same people at the same time. If you're destroying Egypt, you're not uh, educating them anymore. The first nine makas may have served the purpose of edu- education. And arguably, Goyim outside of Mitzrayim would learn about it and it would teach them things. But makas Bechedes was killing the Egyptians. So the Rebbe says makas Bechedes also had two aspects. Like the famous quote, Nogof le Mitzrayim verofo le Yisro. In one act, Hashem was punishing Egypt and healing Yisro. So what the Rebbe says in that sikh is that as Hashem was killing the Egyptians, He was revealing His love to the Jewish people, which would justify saving the Jewish people, even though, halalu halalu, even though arguably the Jewish people were as immersed in idol worship as the Egyptians themselves. So Makas Bechedes killed Egypt, and it raised Yidin up to a place where it revealed in Yidin this unconditional love, this blind love, this infinite love, this higher than reason love, which the Abish had for the Jewish people, which was the basis for Yitzhak and time for the Gula. And all of this represented by this leap, Dilu, the Abish jumps over. There was a gili of Seva of Kalalman, as the Rebbe said. And because it was a gili of Seva of Kalalman, Makas Bechedes uh, simultaneously accomplished two things. Nogof, Lemitzrayim, Barafal Yisrael. It punished Egypt and preserved the Jewish people. And the way Chesidus explains it, in order for one force, one energy, to do two opposite things, it has to have a very high source, it has to have a very, very deep source. And in this case, this save of Kalam, this jumping over, which simultaneously killed Egypt and freed the Jewish people by revealing this Ava Atzmas that the Abish had to the Yidin, comes from the highest levels, from save of Kalam. So let's do the reading. The reason it needed to be a gili of save of kalalman, as the Rebbe says, which is represented by a jump, and only a gili of save of kalalman, which is represented by a jump, could have gotten the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim. So the Rebbe ex- ex- answers his question by contrast. The lake, maybe Machner San it was different than the story of San Chedev, which I'll explain momentarily. Shenem, that the Pesach says, Vayetzi, Malach Havai, Vayach, Bemachana Asher. In one night, 180,000 soldiers dropped dead, Kipshute, the entire Assyrian army. It was the largest army in the world at the time. It may have been the largest army in history 
to that day, to that date. And they died in one night. And uh, over there you didn't have to have a gilly of Seva of Kalam. Hashem didn't have to jump over. A, ma- a malach came. A malach. A malach is even lower than an Ishama. Certainly not the Ebishter himself. And defeated Ashur. And the same is true of sister, the story of Sisr. So of course we all know the story of Sancherev. Sancherev was a Russia. He was an evil man, a very powerful king who conquered the whole world. Quite successfully. And his unique MO, his unique uh, approach to world domination was that he would make everybody move. When he conquered a nation, he didn't kill the people, but he displaced them. He made them move to a place where they were not comfortable. And he would move everybody around. And by moving everybody around, nobody was living on the territory, on the land that was familiar to them, that they were brought up in, that they knew intimately. And this gave him an enormous hold on the world. And he came and he conquered the Seres Ashvatim. He later sieged to Yerushalayim. And the famous story, the Chizkyo, was told by the Navi that Hashem would make a nest. So he went to sleep and he slept soundly in full trust that by morning Sancherev would be gone. And during the night his entire army died. And that was the end of him. His children killed him. A whole long story. But by the story of Machna Sancherev, it says that a Malach killed him. So how come by Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim you have to have Hashem himself? So the Rebbe answers on line 31, Kisham hoyerak shlichis levad. In the case of Sancherev's camp, it was enough for a Malach to wipe out, to annihilate, to exterminate the entire Machna Yashur because there was simply a shlichis, and the shlichis was very black and white. It was simple. Uh, to a predetermined thing, say upogabahem, go and attack them. Finish. That's it. There were no uh, conditions. There were no uh, stipulations. There were no amendments. It was very simple. Go and kill these people. A malach can do that on his own. Mashain kim bimitzayim mitzayim was different because makas is when Hashem killed the firstborn, you had to have a lot of discernment. A lot of judgment. You have to look at every situation individually. First of all, you have to identify all the firstborn. You have to have a special koyach of discernment which the Ebishtek Vayachal has. Who is the firstborn to his father? And of course, like Rashi says, that because there was so much immorality, therefore in one home you can have five or ten b'chedim because kol echad b'chedim liyoviv. Even a firstborn who was the firstborn both to his father and his mother. I, I doubt that the Alt Rebbe means to say a Chiddush Godel that the firstborn from a mother also died. It means a Bechir from a father who was also the firstborn from the mother. Gamkein Koshalei. It's also difficult to determine who they were. Shalim Hem Shoyes Kenan. They were very old. And people forgot that they were firstborn. And the Rebbe says, The angel is not in a position to make this determination, these discernments. And wait, you have to add something else. In addition to identifying who's the firstborn, identifying who's the firstborn to the Egyptians, you also have to single out the Egyptians from the Jewish people. Like Rashi brings in Chumash, that there was a Yid who the night of the Seder, when his parents and his brothers and sisters and family were eating Karben Pesach, he was Beves Mitzri. No, there were such Jews too who also left Mitzrayim, and the Malach had to separate not just a firstborn Egyptian from an Egyptian who was not a firstborn, but a Yid from a Mitzri. So the Rebbe says, Malachim cannot make that determination. Or to say this in other words, let me give you an illustration for this. Yeah? I, I, I tell this to my students as a metaphor a lot. Um, a human hand is made up of five fingers that are dexterous, that they can manipulate things. They're designed to be individual, yeah? You can make your hand into a fist. Which is better, the fingers or the fist? Which is preferred, the fingers or a fist? And of course, the answer to that question is, it depends what you need it for. If you want to break a wall or something else which is solid, a fist, an egg grave, you drill the five fingers together and you make them and to act as one solid unit and have a lot of force, a lot of power. But if you want to make determinations, you want to make discernments of but tiny little distinctions, um, you need fingers, right? The human finger is one of the most sophisticated uh, systems of, uh, of manipulation that exists in the whole 
um, biological world, right? Our fingers are incredibly sensitive and they can, they have very fine motor capabilities. They can do things that uh, other animals could never do because of their fineness. So there is an interface, right? The fist is better when you want to do something that requires force. The fingers are better when, when you do something that requires much more sophistication and subtlety. And the Abishter gave us fingers, which makes our fists weaker. Right? You don't have the same force that Lahavl, an animal, has whose fingers are fused. He doesn't have the ability to use his fingers the way we do. But we have the advantage of being very sophisticated, fine motor uh, function. So a malach operates like a fist. A malach comes into a situation and he uses force to affect what the Abishter expects him to affect. And in the case of Sancheda, the entire army dies. But imagine using a fist, the force of a fist, and the nuance and the subtlety of fingers. This a malach cannot do. This you have to have the Yebish did himself. And that's the story of Makas Bacheres. On the one hand, there was a huge force from Seva of Kalama that came into the world that wiped out so much of what Mitzrayim was. And at the same time, there was such a preciseness, such an exactitude in how, but how this was done. And this combination must come from Atma Saint Sof. Only the Yebish did himself was able to affect such a power and such a preciseness at the same time. And if I may add another kvetch, which I think is worthwhile to add. You know, when you judge, when you judge, if you were a judge in a court of law, if you spend your time judging, it's inevitable, it's loyi molet, that when you judge enough, you become a judging person. You develop a midas agavura. It becomes dominant in you. Because the nature of judgment is to be critical. Critical not only that it's very precise in the analysis, but critical is you almost look for fault. The Eibishter is judging who's a Mitzri and who's a Yehudi. But the judgment involves two opposites. To be punitive, to be exacting, to be negative towards the Mitzri, and at the same time towards the Yid, in the very, very same moment, the very, very same energy as being in a state of Rachamim and Chesed towards the Yid. So because you have these opposites in Makas Bechedes, as I said before, as opposed to the Makas that came earlier, this has to come from Aniva Le Malach, from Vardi Beretz Mitzrayim, from the Madreig of Sevev Kalam. And this is the reason why, this is the reality of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim having to do specifically with Makas Bechedes, and Makas Bechedes has to do with Sevev Kalam. Line 35, Uma Shekosav B'Svarim Tam. Now in Psalms, Sodom, it's written a different reason. Why a malach could not affect Makas Bechedes. He had to have the Ebesh did himself. That Malachim cannot come to such an unclean place. But the Ebesh did can. Says the Rebbe Dochuk. I have a hard time believing this pshat. It says in Sodom. And of course, if it would be a Maimah Chazal, the Rebbe wouldn't question it. The Rebbe's question is written in Sodom. It's Tamim Nachrenim. And the Rebbe is disagreeing. And he says the reason why it had to be an evil lay malach cannot be because Malachim cannot come down into Mitzrayim, Shari Machani Asher Techiach. In the story of Asher, the Malachim did come down into Assyria, and they were also to show him, big to show him, Apikursim, atheists. And therefore, the Rebbe argues the reason was not enough a Malach, and yet have Ani Velei Malach, the Abish did himself, and not a Malach, because this judgment had to be forceful and exact at the same time, and this can come only from the Abish himself. Ach Eich Sheyi Hatam, whether you accept, says the Rebbe, what I just said, that you cannot say that the reason Malachim will not use the Mitzrayim is because it was complex. I'm sorry, because a Malach cannot go into a Malachim Tum. Or that I wasn't a Malach, a Malach cannot discern fine distinction between one group and another group, and members of one group and other members of the same group. The bottom line is, Hakavona Kelecha. The, the end is the same. And what is that? The godliness that emerged, the Yidna Mitzrayim, came from Sev of Kalaman, which is infinite. And that's the Pshat. Ani. Ani vele malach, ani vele sarav, ani vele ashaliach, ani ahu. Vele acher, vezeh winyan ani, which is mehusi vatsmusi, is barach, the Abish did himself, which is vele me bechinas me malakalaman, as opposed to the lights of malakam. Now I want to uh, observe, yes? We had this yesterday. It's written a lot of my modern material, I don't cut the that when you speak about Mamalek Kalalman, they use the word Kavid. Mamalek Kalal is Kvayde. So in that Pasuk, of course, the first word is the word Oretz, as opposed to Eretz Vishamayim. 
And the second word is covet. Covet is a lavush. Baruch, shame, kaved, malchus, it's a ha'ara, the ha'ara, the ha'ara, the ha'ara, the ha'ara, When you talk about seva kalam, you say es ha'shemayim and ves ha'aras together. Heaven and earth are joined together. Because seva kalam is above the separation between Mamali and seva. And over there we say the lashon ani mole. So ani goes on seva kalam and ani, the koyach of seva kalam, affected the, what we call in chsidas the naguf le mitzrayim ve rafa le yisrael. And it happens babas achas. Punishing Egypt and healing the Jewish people happens simultaneously in one act. But I want to clarify something. And this clarification is really going to be the last point of this Maimir, beginning on line 60. When the Rebbe says that Pesach was a Yom Tif, where two opposites happened simultaneously, Nogav Le Messiah and Rafa Yisrael, and that the Abish to discern between a Mitzri and a Yehudi who was staying in the same house and all those other details, you must understand that this is not the ordinary concept of Seva of Kalalman. Because the ordinary concept of Seva of Kalalman is called Chitzeni Yisamakif. The ordinary concept of Seva of Kalalman is infinite. And one of the weaknesses, one of the downsides of the Inyan of something which is infinite is that everything is equal. In the Lashon Apostle, Kachashayich HaKayeda, darkness and light are equal. Just like light and darkness are equal, darkness and light are equal. Meaning to say, evil and good cohabit. There's no separation between the tzaddik and the rasha, between Tev and Rav, between Haman and Mordechai, and so on. So Seva Kalaman should not be helpful. Because Seva Kalaman brings a light into the world that's either good to everybody or bad to everybody. How does Seva Kalaman make a judgment and be good to one and bad to another? And the teret ultimately is, is this is not Seva Kalaman, this is actually what's called in Chesidus, Pnimius Hamakif, higher than Seva Kalaman. Or as I like to teach it, Seva Kalaman with a spearhead. It's infinite. And it has a focus. Chitani Yisamakav is infinite and it's all over the place. Which is why it says in Chesidus and Vestach and the Pasuk in Ben Huva Mita Neis in Basi Yivachoy it says in Mitlaer Pnei Morim that there's two unique as the Klipa. One is Ben Hu which gets Chayis from Makiv from Makiv Elyon and Basi Yivachoy from Libit Simtzum and Klipa gets Chayis from Kedusha in two ways and one of those ways is Makiv Elyon. Seva of Kalam and gives everybody because Seva of Kalam is not discriminating. And then there is a is infinite, but it has a focus. Not a logical focus, an absolute focus. A focus based on primius arats. And from that madregi, you have the nog of Lemitzayim and the Rafali Yisrael. In other words, the save of Kalam, which was necessary to affect Makas Bechedes Nitzis Mitzrayim, was higher than save of Kalam. It was so much harder than Seva of Kalam that it could, in a focused way, infinity with a focus, punish Egypt and heal the Jewish people. And the Rebbe continues on line 40. Now we go to Purim. Here's the answer to the question about the difference between Pesach and Shavuos and Purim and Hanukkah according to the Meiri. And of course I already told you the answer, now we're going to read it. That Pesach's Nes, Pesach's Geula comes from Seva of Kalam. And as I said a moment ago, nitztam, not ordinary seva, it's actually higher than seva of kalaman. Vaharaya, it judges, it discerns, it discriminates. But Purim and Chanukah, which are Yom Tev and the Rabbana, come only from Amalek Kalam. So the Rebbe, Kihi, Neha Yom Tev, who every single Yom Tev, whether it's Pesach or Shavuos, or it's Purim or Chanukah, have connected with a Ness, with a miracle, right? We all know the Chsides that goes on this that um, the Rebbe brings in his letters, and he mentioned it in the Sikhs, Benegir to Yates Kislev, regarding Yates Kislev, that 500 years before the Alt Rebbe was born, and before the Alt Rebbe went out of prison, there was a Rishon living in Italy, in or- Orleans, who said, Hu Yeim Besura. The Tuesday, Yates Kislev is day for good news, from Surah's Tevis. So the Rebbe brings out the point that Yates Kislev was a Yom Tev before Yates Kislev became a Yom Tev. In other words, the Jewish people have had many holidays. If you look in the Sefer called Megillah's Tainus, you have maybe five or six a month. But most of those holidays come and go. They last for a while and then they dissipate. Why? Because when Hashem makes a nest, so you celebrate the nest. But when you forget the nest, the celebration becomes stale. And as the Gemara says, Butler, when the Bismuthish was destroyed, Butler, Megillah's Tainus, all those days that you're not allowed to fast and say a eulogy or Butler. But then there are special Yom Tev. And these special Yom Tevim are forever. Why are they forever? Because the event that precipitated the holiday is only a symptom and not the cause. 
We went out of Mitzrayim, so Pesach became a Yom Tov. But Pesach had to do with Cheras from the moment the Abish created the world. The Moyed, the time of Tazvav, and this has to do with freedom. It was revealed because of an event. Vav Sivan has to do with the Tater from Sheshes Mebereshes, like it says, Yema Shishi. And when Vav Sivan in 2448 came, it was manifest, and Abish giving us the Tater, and Zabish two Sukkis. So the Yom Tevim are not Yom Tevim because of what happened. What happened, happened because the Yom Tevim, when the Abish created the world, Pesach was as Vav Nisan. We didn't know about it for 2448 years, but Pesach was built into the calendar as a day for freedom, and Shuas is a day for Tater, and so on. And then when it came into actuality, these events brought these ideas out into the world. And that's the Pshat of Yitas Kislev, right? Yitas Kislev was a Yom Tev. Before it was a Yom Tev because it's part of the hard drive of the creation. That this day has to do with the Tev, it's the Pnimi Yisatera. And it was only revealed to us when the story of Yitas Kislev happened. al Rebbe was arrested and al Rebbe was liberated and so on and so forth. And of course the same is true of Hanukkah and Purim. These Yom Mim Tev are not Yom Mim Tev because of events. Because if these Yom Mim Tev are Yom Tev because of events, after a few generations the events are forgotten and the holiday goes away. These Yom Mim Tev are forever is because there's something about them that predates them and something about them which survives them. Chaneke, you know the Chazal that say that on the 25th day of Kislev in the year 2449, the Mishkan was ready to go up. And the Ebishter decided the Mishkan should go up in the end of Adar in the beginning of Nisan. But Eina Kaddish Baruch Hu the fact that the Mishkan was completed in Chafei B'Kislev makes that day deserving of a Yom Tif, and specifically a Yom Tif associated with Chinuch and the Ebi said your time will come and of course a thousand years later you had the year from Chinuch um, on Chafei B'Kislev in the Mesir Nevesh of the Chashmei Noyim and so forth and so on so Chanukah and Purim like Pesach and Shavuos are built into the heart of the creation and they're both connected to the Inyan HaMesiris Nefesh. Right? The Rebbe says, in the middle of the Rebbe says, of that uh, Chaneke, I forgot which is which. One is Melmato Lamaila, the other is Melmato Lamaila. Right? Purim is more about the goof, and Chaneke is more about the Neshama, so Mestama Chaneke is Melmato Lamaila, and Purim is Melmato Lamaila, but I forgot. I forgot which is which. And these Yom Tev do at Mesiris Nefesh, but before these days ever came and these miracles ever happened, these days were destined that one day something special would occur and it would reveal the Moyed and the Yom Tev of Chav Hebe Kislev and Yedal and Tezvav Adr. You may have put him. So uh, when these holidays come and we celebrate them, and like the famous Tev from the Baal Shem Tev, HaKeda Megillah Mafrei Le'yatza, we learn these stories as if they're current. Because on these days, the Chanukah and Purim, just like Pesach and Shavuot, there were great miracles which saved the Jewish people. But they're different. How are they different? Kihine. So they have a preface. It gives a Hagdom. Hayom Tif, every holiday, is a Gila across in the world. And every holiday, whether it's Pesach or Shavuot or Chanukah or Purim, which reveals Godliness in the world, involves two steps. Number two, Number two is written first, who inyan ashras can do shal It's the manifesting of the supernal holiness, the light of a Kaddish Baruch. And number one, v'e'ef shali is gilizeh. V'hashrazu, it's impossible for this revelation to happen, and for this manifesting to be, ad she'yaviru mitchila ha'chitzeinim ha'minoim. Unless you remove first the chitzeinim, the klipas that block. Like it says in the Pesach, v'yata ha'romikabech. So if godliness is going to be brought into the world, especially an increased madrigo of godliness, which is going to make it into a yom tev, and a yom simcha, you have to get rid of the garbage, clean house, and then in that space you can bring the gili alakus. So there are two steps. The first step is cleaning out the shmutz, cleaning out the worship of teva, and the containments of teva, and uh, raising yourself above it. And then point two would be the nest that would follow, the gili alakus that would follow. And the argument is, when the Eibishter does a nest for the Jewish people, and every nest has to involve, number one, to get rid of the shmutz, and number two, to be Megal HaLakus. If this comes from Amalek these two things contradict each other. Because since the Indian of Amalek is Hachone, it's Askos V'Yislapshus, Amalek invests itself in what it's doing. So if Amalek is being a judge, Amalek cannot be compassionate. So the Yom Teva, Purim, and Chanukah, according to the Me'idi, 
are divided up into two stages. Stage number one, the Eibish des Rachmim, and stage number two, the celebration of the Atrachmonis. It has to be separate, because the Tnuis of the Midah of the Eibish des Gevurah to punish, and the Tnuis of the Eibish des Midah of Chesed to embrace, are contradictions and opposites, if it's a Gili of Mamalek Alam. And Seva Kalaman is not like us. Let's read it inside. Well, the Gabe put him on line 44. When it comes to put says the Rebbe, there were two steps. Number one, first of all, you had to kill the enemies. 75,000 Amalekites were killed, Agogites were killed. Shaya Amalekim, which were Amalek, she klipa tzu, which is a severe klipa. Like the Pasuk says, Reish is Goyim Amalek. The beginning of every Goy, the premise of every Goy is Amalek. The end of Amalek has to be wiped off the face of the earth. The other Goyim can be Mavudar, but Amalek has to be wiped off the face of the earth. So the Vart, the Reish is Goyim Amalek, means every Goy has Klipa. But every Goy wants to look nice, wants to be liked, wants to be appreciated. So he has an appeal, he has a, a front, how he's good. Reish is Goyim, the beginning of all Goyim is Amalek. He doesn't try to look nice. He's a chutzpinik and he tells you as much. I'm, I want to kill you and I'm going to do it. You can't stop me. That's Amalek. That's Haman. That's vicious. And it becomes stupid at a certain point. When you, when you act in hatred towards another person, and you forgot why, you just cannot take that they exist, that's called chutzpah belit taga, that's the inyan of Amalek. So the Rebbe says, when the Yidin defeated Amalek and they made a celebration, it happened one thing at a time. First of all, Amalek existed, Agog existed, and had to be wiped out. And second, Uksiva, the Pasuk says, Mochi Timcha Vaser is B'nei Haman. The Yidin have an obligation to raise Amalek, besides for the fact that it says, Mochi Imcha Hashem will raise Amalek, but there's clearly a Iyan from Mochi Timcha, we have to raise Amalek, and killing the Aser is B'nei Haman. It says, Rebbe V'yachakach, only afterwards, Asu Yem Mishta V'simcha, Mishleach Monaz V'gemen. After you get rid of the evil, is it possible to have a Yem Tev, a new day of joy? When you celebrate it through eating and drinking for the rich and to the poor and to your friends and so forth and so on, um, to celebrate this greatness. Which is the idea of his Galus Sakadusha, revealing holiness. So the Rebbe says in line 48 of the Darach Mashal HaMalach, for example, a physical king, Elias by his Chodesh, of a king wants a new home. You take an old house and clean it. Full of schmutz, you have to clean it out, you have to get rid of it. Of all kinds of filth. And only afterwards can the king bring in his furniture and bring in the aesthetic beauty that is typically associated with royalty and to make it into a mishkan or mikdash for a king, for the Mebishin Kvayach. Says the Rebbe on line 50, This is why the miracle of Purim, the miracle of Hanukkah happened Yud Gimel Adel, like it says in the Megillah Sestet, and and the Chovdalit Kislev, the way it's brought in the Meidi, the the victory at war, which came before Chanukah, and on the next day was a Yom Tov. Why? Yei Mal, if the first day was Havara, getting rid of what's no good. And the next day was Agili, was the revelation. And of course, the point is that when you're Megala, limited Oid, if it's Din, it's not Racham, it's Racham, it's not Din, they contradict one another. And therefore, one has to happen first, and the other one has to happen second. And since the Gili, which is associated with Purim, was only a Gili Mamalik Alamin, because it was, I don't know what you want to call it, a Golos Yamtev, a Darabonandike Yamtev. There's all kinds of reasons and explanations and uh, caveats that this can all bring up. But because it was only a revelation of Mamalik Alamin, Shahua they had droga, which is gradual and step by step. Tchilas, ma'ivir first you take away the old and then you bring in the new. And the Rebbe says in line fifty-two, ef On the level of a malakalaman, you cannot simultaneously have nogaf limitzrayim and rafali yisrael baruch and at the same time, as opposed to Pesach. Avon leis the Pesach line fifty-three. Pesach is different. Because how ye gili bechin a save of kalamin peitach the revelation of save of kalamin and what is save of kalamin an incredible force but as we discussed earlier in this case the gili of save of kalamin is an incredible force which at the same time judges with great discernment and preciseness these two opposites in the save of kalamin 
Shein of Ebchinus is Chalkos, it's beyond separating one from the next. Umei, Elokulum, Bishav, and Shaitu, Elam, equally. But at the same time, he pays attention to what's going on with each one. Says the Rebbe, when you have such a Gilu, a Gilu, you have ain't safe. But a Gilu, you ain't safe, which on the one hand operates like a fist, on the other hand, it's very discerning and sensitive. Al Kain, Yochali, Shnei, Dvar, Melu, Menesiach. The two opposites don't contradict one another. And simultaneously, at the very same moment, you have Nogov, Limitzrayim, and Lafal Yisrael, it says, He punishes Egypt, and he saves the Jewish people, he heals the Jewish people. Nogov, Limitzrayim, Makas, Pechedet, inflicting on the Egyptians the plague of the firstborn. And at the same time, his Galas, HaKadusha, Yisrael, revealing holiness to the Jewish people, which was similar to the Beis HaMikdash, Atcha Amru, Halal, they said, Halal, Halal, and so forth. Parenthesis, it's not in the parenthesis, but it should be. That the punishing of the Egyptians was before midnight, and the saving of the Jewish people after midnight, says the Rebbe, um, it's untrue. It all happened at the same time. And this is the Rebbe's final answer, so to speak. Purim and Chaneke are Giluim of Amalek Olam. In Pesach Shur, the Sukkah is the Giluim of Sevel Kalam, and Defer Malek Olam, it has to be two steps. How good for cash? I'm going to ask you a question which I cannot answer, but I'm still going to say it. Why is Hanukkah important only from Amalek, not from Savior? Why? And I'm sure there's a lot of answers to the question. Perhaps the answer is because they're not written in the Tedesh Shabbat they were added by people. So they don't have the take of Tedesh Shabbat Perhaps because those Yom Tevin happened in Managol as opposed to Managbayas, which is also tricky because of um, Hanukkah and so on. So why it is that Yom Tevin that are live only from Amali and not from Sevev is very difficult to understand why. But because they live from Amali Kalam, and it has to be done in peace, must do in, ha- in halves, one half at a time. And therefore, Hanukkah and Purim, the victory at war, it happens one day and the celebration of that victory happens the following day. So we understand the nature of the events that created the great Yom Tevim that we have. Pesach, Shuas, and Sukkis, and Hanukkah and Purim. And the Alter Rebbe says, every time there's a Yom Tif, of course, there's a great revelation of godliness in the world. But the revelation of godliness in the ver- world involves two aspects. To get rid of what's not good and to create space for what is good. And of course, this doesn't only mean geographically taking away uh, a negative thing from a particular place. It means taking away the klipa from a certain situation. So it could be a gili alakus in the world to make a nest. Or to create a Gilea Lakus, actually, because it's not one time. Every year these things recur again. But there's a difference between Pesach, Shuas, and Sukkot, where the negative and the positive come from Seva of Kalab, and so they happen in an instant. And Hanukkah and Purim, where they happen successively, one next to the next. So the Rebbe now asks a question, and I already told you about this earlier in today's class. Achlohoven, the question that's outstanding is as follows. If Seva of Kalab is ain't safe, infinite, infinite is very powerful. But infinite also has no personality, has no spirit. Right? What's the marshal for infinity that we always use in Chassidus? A circle, eagle. Why do we use the marshal of a circle? Because a circle has no beginning and no middle and no end. If you have no beginning, no middle and no end, you neutralize everything, even Tevin Ra. And accordingly, Ulefonov, Kachashecha Ka'eda, darkness and light are equal. And it says in Chassidus that Klipa, like I said before, the Maimah from the Mitle Rebbe and Ben Huva, Mitanese. That it says in Chesidus, the name of the Mitla Rebbe, that Klipa draws Chayas from Kedusha in two ways. One is called Makif Elyon. Makif Elyon is what we call here Chitzenius HaMakif, or Kachashecha Ke'ira. And the other is called the Ribu Yitzim Tzumim. So, Sevev Kalalman is Shove Umashva. And Kachashecha Ke'ira, so then Vim Tzadak Tavagemim. Righteousness is not righteous, and Sakta Matitan Lev, and Abshacha Matasa Lev, good isn't good, and you believe it's all the same. No. So the question becomes even stronger. You need a gili from Seva of Kalaman. Why? Because Mamala Kalaman won't be able to do it. Why won't Mamala Kalaman be able to do it? Because you have to judge and be compassionate at the same time. Judge, be gavuradik, and be exact at the same time. Nogaf Limitzrayi, Varafali Yisrael, the Kayach, to simultaneously use a fist and use fingers, use the fist to punish, and use the fingers to separate who to punish and who not to punish has to be an infinite force, and it comes from Seva of Kalaman. But the kash is, Seva of Kalaman does not discern at all. Seva of Kalaman makes no distinctions. Something which is infinite does not separate good from evil. 
And the question therefore is, Im ken eich misham mamish, how? From Sevel Kalman, is it possible that Yum Shech Lihiyes Nogof Lemitzayim V'chulu, the Ebesh is going to punish Egypt and spare the Jewish people at the same time, Gavud and Ches at the same moment, literally. Because at the Kech of Sevel Kalman, Faket, Sevel Kalman is not helpful at all, it's the opposite of help. And the Rebbe answers uh, by bringing us in in front of other Magyinim, which we're going to get to momentarily. And I want you to know, over here it's Bekitzit, this is just ten lines, yeah? In the middle of the Rebbe, there's a very big Ariches, and I never, I never learned the mind of the middle of the Rebbe. I keep referencing it because it's the first source that Chassidus gives. Where I, where I learned about this idea that Klippa Zerivitzim Tzumim and Klippa Zmakav Elyon is in Tafresh Samachay. In the Tisha Hemshech, the Maimir of Shuvi Yisrael, the third Maimir, the third Maimir is called Anechi Anechi Mechi B'Shach Lamani. That's the name of the Maimir. And in that Maimir, Anechi Anechi, the Rebbe Rashab discussed at length these, these ideas in Ben Huva Mita. He brings the middle of the Rebbe and he explains the two ways in which Klippa gets Chayas. One way in which Klippa gets Chayas is called from Ribi Tzim Tzumim. Ribi Tzim Tzumim means Chalishos. Ribi Tzim Tzumim means weakness. And I'll explain it briefly. When a person is cold or hungry or tired, they get sick. But cold doesn't make you sick, hunger doesn't make you sick, and fatigue doesn't make you sick. So why do you get sick? And the answer is because you're weak. And when a person is weak, the parasites and the bacteria and the viruses that already exist within the human organism because there's all kinds of, we're carrying around all kinds of things all of the time, are able to multiply, able to spread and to make a person ill. In other words, you don't get sick from the cold. You get sick from the sickness and the cold and the weakness that that affects, allows the negative forces within the body to become dominant. In other words, you have a certain amount of energy. And when you're warm, you don't use to need energy to heat your body. So you have enough energy to fight off infection, disease. Um, when you're not, when you're satisfied, when you've eaten, and when you're not afraid, there's a psychological component to this, and you're not tired, you have the koyak, your body has the koyak to fight off whatever negative things may exist within the body. But when you're weak, or you're afraid, you're cold, you use up too much energy to compensate for those other things, and there's not enough left over to fight off the klipa, and that's how a person gets sick. That's called the ribit symptom. It's a marshal. This is the nimshal. The klipa draws from kedusha, where kedusha is weak. Like it's brought in the chasidis, kerachal of negez is ene alom. Kerachal goes on malchus. A sheep, when you shear her, when you cut her for wool, she goes silent. She lets you do it. And the nimshal is that klipa takes from kedusha, where kedusha is weak. And then there's the other source of klipa, of chayes, the klipa, which is makaf elyon. And that's Sancherev. Usually they bring Sancherev that uh, Sancherev got such incredible uh, koiches before he was destroyed because he got from Akif Elyon. And Bechal it says that Chov of Davis Nizeinim Bechaste Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu Like it says Marich uh, Af, right? It says in the Mishnah in Pichy Yavis Kamo Erech Apayim Lofonov At Shebo Vehevi so the Erech HaPayin is called in Chesidus, in Kabbalah, Arech Ampen. Arech Ampen is Keset. Arech Ampen is Chetzen Yisamakif. And the Erech HaPayin Lofon of Arech Ampen gives Chayas the Klippa, but here it's for a different reason. Not because Kedusha is weak, but because there's no focus, there's no spearhead. To use a Kabbalah term, a Chesidisha term, a Pneum is the term, there's no Ma. Ma means Bittel, and Ma is Begimatri Odom. There's no mention, just ain't soft, there's chaos. And Klippa gets Chayas from chaos. So the question becomes, the Eibishter is redeeming it from its time using a keich a save of kalam. She does not use by putim and chanukah, and I don't know why. And because he's using keich a save of kalam, and he's able to nug of limit time, it the same moment. But save of kalam doesn't care. Save of kalam does not discriminate. So how is it judging, and how is it punitive, and how is it precise? So the answer which is brought in the Maimorim, is that the makif ha'elyin can be made to go only l'mokim haroi through the strength of kedusha? I'll explain to you how this works. Yeah, go back to the mushal. When does a person get sick? When they're weak, cold, tired, vulnerable. Yeah, that's the ribut simtum, right at the bottom of the hishtalshalos. When there's weakness in hishtalshalos, 
klipa is able to draw from Kedusha, Kedusha doesn't have the strength to protect itself, to stay uh, focused. What happens when Kedusha is strong, like a person who's well rested, well eaten and warm and not afraid. So the body has immunity, the body has koyach to fight it off. But the other thing is, when a person is healthy and strong, they also have a very clear das and a clear focus. And that clear das and that clear focus causes, it affects... That the chayis should go only the chayis should go only where it's supposed to go, not where it's not supposed to go. So Hasidus says in the same Maimur, Anechi, Anechi, Samachi, that when Kedusha is strong, two things happen. Kedusha means Adam, Kedusha means Atzilos. When Kedusha is strong, number one, Ribit Simtsumim cannot go away to Klipa because the strength of the Kedusha holds on to its chayis. That it should go only lamokam aroy, not lamokam she'en aroy, but something else happens. When kedusha is strong, it draws the makaf hell only into itself. The insof which is higher than ishtalshos, which is called arech ampin, erech apayin, chitzeni is a keser, kachashech al which doesn't discriminate. When kedusha is strong, it affects that what's above it should also go only into kedusha because of the strength of kedusha. Now, of course, you're going to wonder how could something lower manage and direct something higher, and I'm sure there's more than one answer, and one of the answers would be that the Shadish of Pneumius, of Ma, is from Pneumius HaKesed, which is even higher than Chetzenius HaKesed, but there may be other answers as well. But this is the way it's explained in the Memorim, that when Kedusha is strong, not only does it prevent Klipa from getting Chayes to Ribit Tzimtzumim, it prevents Klipa from getting Chayes from Ma Kefa Elyin, from what's ain't safe. And that's why Save of Kalaman work to take Yidin out of Mitzrayim. Save of Kalam and work the Yid Nerem Mitzrayim in the Lashon, which you're going to see at the very end of this Maimir. On line 73, Has Save of Save of Kalam the infinite force of Save of Kalam is Mislabish, is added to Mamale so that it should be infinite and also focused. And if it goes, Lamoka Maroi. And that's how Save of Kalam was effective. So the, the question was. Isn't Save of Kalama non discriminating? And if Save of Kalama is not discriminating, how could it do anything constructive? Especially something as fine as Nogaf Limit Time, Rafali Israel at once. And the answer is because since Kedusha was strong by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, so the Makif comes into the Pnimi, and the Kayach of Ain Save of Save of Kalama is focused through Mamala Kalama, and therefore it goes Lamoka Maroi, Nogaf Limit Time, and Rafali Israel. Let's learn it inside. And I'll read the question over again, if you don't mind. Line 60. Ach, lahoven, the question becomes. Save of Kalam and neutralizes all differences. And as far as Save of Kalam is concerned, light and darkness are the same. So Bemele Klipa is not any worse than Kedusha. Or Kedusha is not any better than Klipa. The Im Sadakta of a game are you doing good? You're not going to be honored. And if you do evil, you're not going to be punished. So the question becomes, Im Kain, the question therefore is, Eich Misha Mamish, how? From Seve, from Kachash Eich Ha'keeda Mamish, Yom Shechlias Nogav Lim Mitzrayim V'chulu, simultaneously you're punishing Egypt and healing the Jewish people. Ach, in the Teret says, Amash Pichikosa Priyetz Chaim. He brings the Kabbalah Priyetz Chaim. And of course, any person who's learned Chassidus knows that this Priyetz Chaim is brought in so many places in Chassidus to explain Avadim Ayinu. Um, it, it's originally Kabbalah of Darizal, but it's brought up in explaining of Adam I'll explain to you what's the Chiddush here. Usually Klippa, logically, right? Klippa is the bottom of the heap. Klippa is the lowest level. That's how it is always. And Klippa exists because Klippa is weak. Klippa exists because Klippa is not paying attention. Klippa is weak because Klippa is imprecise. Here we have Klippa getting from the highest Madreyes. You see, Pare is in that category of Sancherev and Midyon that are Deep klipas. Deep klipas means that they're very highly involved, or they're involved in kedusha at very high levels. Pare was drawing chayes from keser, just like Sancherev, from chitani yisamakif, and therefore the goal of yidden from Mitzrayim is not about Hashem cutting off the legs, the bottom, the hair where klipas is yearning from kedusha in the ribits and tzumim. Hashem must have cut off the source of klipa. From Kedusha in, in Makkah for Elion, in the highest of levels, right? You know what says in Chesidus, right? That brings it in the Sichas. Then Beis, Pashas, boy, the Rebbe spoke about it, that Moshe is afraid of Pari, because Moshe is Chochmah, and Pari is Keser. Think about it. But Pari is Eis, he has Ha'erif, his Chitzeni is with his back turned to Kedusha. 
He's even higher than Meshach Rabbeinu, and the Ebishter has to tell him, Boy, I'll, pare. I'll go with you to Pari. So the Rebbe here explains the Priyetz Chaim. It says in Priyetz Chaim, Bepirosh Avadam Ayinu V'chulu, V'gaymen. That when we were slaves in Egypt, and then Vayetzein Adashem Alakeinu Misham, Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. And again, I'm repeating, normally, you would imagine the interface between Kedusha and Klippa being on the lowest levels, and Klippa draws because Kedusha is weak, and Kedusha has to strengthen itself on the lowest levels to take away the highest that Klippa took from it, first of all to discontinue it, and then to take it back, and so on and so forth, so the Klippa is going to die. But not here. Hashem Aleikeinu is Avo. Hashem Aleikeinu is Chochm and Bina, the first two spheres. And the Vietzuyeinu Avaya Aleikeinu is how Alvo Hilbishu Lizreye is the Yarechampen. Chochmo Bina become the garments for the arms of Arachampen, which is Keser. Um, keser is Ein Safe, right? And the medias of Keser are called Turi uh, Hashecha. They're, they're higher than Ishtalsos, they're infinite Mides. And Chochmo Bina drape them, they become a Lavush. In other words, Chochmo Bina, the first two Svitas of Tikkun in Kedusha, become a Lavush for the Zreyes of Keser, which is higher than Kedusha. But this Zreyes of Klippa of, of Keser, because their Chitenya Samakav could feed Kedusha and Klippa equally. So what's happening? What's happening is something lower is spearheading something higher. Ava chachma bina lower than adich. Now normally, when you have a driver in a car, the driver is on top and the car is below, right? So if adich ampen, which is keset, is higher than abba ve'ima, which is chachma bina, who should be driving the car and who should be the driven? Adich should be driving chachma bina, but that's not how it is over here. Get a hold of Kesed, which is higher than them. But Kesed by itself is Chitin Yisamaka, Kachashech HaKeida, doesn't make any discrimination. And Chachma Bina, which are lower than Kesed, focus Kesed, that it should go Lamaka Maroi. That's the Hasbara of how you manage the way Klippa is getting Chayis and Kedusha for Maka for Elian. And it's the Hasbara of Yetzias Mitzrayim. It's a Pasuk by Yetzias Mitzrayim, is a Pasuk. And therefore, it explains how save of Kalalman, which usually is so non-discriminate, discriminating could be Nogav Lemitzrayim and Rafali Yisrael. And he explains, Pirush. Kini Yisrael, Sharsham Abchinas Ponim. The Jewish people come from the face of Alakus. They are the face. What does the face mean that Abish has revealed? What does the face mean that the radiance in the face represents a richness of connection? to the Eivishter, to your counterpart. You know, when the face of a Yid faces the face of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, Klippa doesn't have a chance. It says, Rebbe Mitzrayim, Shoshim Mubachinus HaKerayim. Mitzrayim comes from the rear, Eirif, the back of the neck, as it says in Kabbalah and Chesidis. I'm sorry, pardon me. Pare Eisies HaEirif V'Gemen. V'chuli. That Pare, the same letter as the back of the neck. So it's a very high level. It represents higher than Ishtashos, but HaKerayim. Right, you have a cheraim which is also very high. Elam Mateo is a cheraim. A cheraim means you're getting something from somebody else with your back turned. You want to take without acknowledgement, without submission, without humility, without a thank you. Klipe is a cheraim. And some of the klipes are a cheraim in Makif Elian, not by Ribit Simtsum, but in the very highest of levels. And he continues If Kedusha is strong, Klipe doesn't stand a chance. But when Kedusha is weak, Klippa can stand up. Whereas, considering the fact that the Yidin's condition was the Abish's face was concealed, as it says in the post of the whole generation died out, and the Jewish people remained never orphaned. And I told you the story on a previous occasion. This story, I think, has so much meaning. It's such a poignant little story. That in the last few months of the Rebbe Tzemach Tzedek's life, Bechaim Chesed Ba'al Mohadein, during that winter of Tafresh Chavov, that would be 1865-66, he occasionally, a few times, called his son and successor, the Rebbe Marash. And when the Rebbe Marash came in to his father, Tzemach Tzedek, Tzemach Tzedek opened up Medish Rabba on Shmeis, where it says, Vayomas Yesev Chol Echa Vachol Adel, who Yesev died, and his brothers died, and the whole generation died. 
So it says in the Medrash, Rabban Shmeis, Afapisha, Mesu Elu, Alekeim, Shalelu, Le Meis. All of these people died. The whole generation died out. All the Tadikam are gone. And there was no replacement. That was it. Alekeim, Shalelu, the God of these Tadikam, Le Mesu, didn't die. So the Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, used to read this Medrash to the Remarash, and the Remarash would stand and smile. Then the Remarash would walk out of his father and go into the other room and he would cry, but Moish Shlish. Because he knew exactly what his father was telling him. A whole generation of the biggest tzaddikim of chassidus passed away between Tafish Chavdalet and Tafish Chavav Chavzayin. And it brought on a state of darkness and tzorus, tzrudus, which uh, I guess you could say didn't finish till the, till the Holocaust. Some, whatever it was, 70 years later. But in any case, I don't mean to get uh, distracted. When Yosef is alive and his brothers are alive, Yidin are in a state upon him. And when Yidin are in a state of Ponim and facing a Lakus, the face of godliness, Klippa doesn't stand a chance. But when the face is lifted, and therefore, even Yidin are getting chayas in an indirect way, in a rear way, like one throws over his shoulder, and the Jewish people fell to a state of Acherayim. And of course, when you learn about Acherayim usually is a bad thing. Sometimes they explain, it could have milus, but it certainly has chesrenis. Whereas, considering the fact that the face of the Jewish people no longer was facing the face of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, there was a situation called Ocher. So we became slaves. Klipa became stronger than us. How did Klipa become stronger than us? In Mitzrayim, the answer was because it came from higher than say the Nishtanshlos. Other Klipas, other Goyim, other Goyishkaitin are from Ribi Tzimtzumim, but Mitzrayim is one of those klipas which is higher than Seyed al And like I said before, the Dezeir says Meshav was afraid of Pari. Uh, so the Golos Mitzrayim happened because Kedusha was not strong enough to streamline where klipas, where the Chayas of Makaf Ali and Gol, so it went away to Klippa and we became subjects, we became subordinate, became slaves of Klippa. Line 70 now, Avalachakach Yetzienu. Hashem took that out, took us out. He 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 allowed us to turn and face him and him to face us, whatever our zechus was or our was not. But based after Khosali Yisrael, Hashem promised that we're gonna go out of Mitzrayim when the time came, he took us out of Mitzrayim. And how did he take us out of Mitzrayim? Hashem Hashem is Chachmo, Alakenu is Bino. And he'll be shuvachulu. They became levushim to what's higher than chachma and bina. And in this case, the lower pnimius of chachma and bina streamlined the higher makkah that should go only lamokam haroi shum shechashpo. That even keser, even save of kalamin, should be bechinus yar avaya ponav should radiate the face of a kaddish baruch hu. By days a nimshech itanu comes only to the Jewish people, and therefore it also is sela. Like klipa dies, kedusha is forever. Sela means for the gemara says kol magav shem nezach salavod. It's forever. And he explains. It's taka true. It is actually true. The tzev of by itself. The canal is not discriminating. And just like it gives Kedusha, it gives Klippa, it doesn't make any distinction. Says the Rebbe Avala. However, in this case, The infinite, non-discriminating light was streamlined from below to the fourth of Mamale Kalamin. As a consequence of that, it went only Lamoka Maroi, but the fact that it was infinite allowed for the two opposites of Noga Varofu, like we described before, Sharimenachol, Nimshach Kavokolu. After the Tsimtsum you have a kav which focuses. Because the Savior comes through Mamali. Avoshal Bishovakulu, Nimshach Shaitianami Mitzrayim. The stranglehold that Klipa has on Kedusha. Because there's a numbness and a darkness in the world is lifted, and they wish to redeem us, and it gives us freedom. And like I said earlier, the freedom that the Abish gives us is not because the Mitzrayim are taken out of the way, but because after the midnight that we're describing in this moment, when there was the Nogaf Le Mitzrayim, Rafael Yisrael, there is the midday that Nigla Leim, Melech Macham Lacham Akadish Baruchu Bechvedi Yatz, Hashem reveals himself. And therefore, the the dough did not become chomistic. Ogolam and he redeemed them. And the meaning of the word Ogolam means he gave them freedom. Because a person is not free because he has no master. 
A person is only free because he masters himself. And Mr. Hashem, next time we'll learn a different Maimed Belinid. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.